Welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by the virtualinstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Hello there, everyone. Matt here with the virtualinstructor.com, and welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, the greatest live broadcast in all of YouTube. What we do here is either myself or my good friend and fellow artist and art teacher, Ashley Hurst, we try to create a drawing for you inside of 45 minutes. And this is actually season 10 of Getting Sketchy, and this is episode two. So if you've never seen an episode, you can always go back and watch all of them. They're all recorded here on YouTube. But this, of course, is live here tonight. And I'd like to welcome all of you who are joining us tonight. Ashley is going to be doing the drawing tonight. Um, and I put that in quotations because... What do you mean by those quotes? Right, because it's not, <laughs> it's not really what you would think of a typical drawing. And you'll see in just a minute why I say that. But... If you are watching this live, there is a chat box. Of course, you can make comments and ask questions. If you do have a comment or question that's directed at Ashley or I, you can put that in all capital letters. That'll help me see it a little bit easier tonight since I'm manning the chat box. We won't take it that you're yelling at us, of course, and uh, we'll do our best to answer those questions or address those comments for you, of course. And so just keep that in mind. And like I said, Ashley's gonna be doing the drawing tonight, but before we go into that, I just wanna remind you, each season here on Getting Sketchy, we try to do uh, something that's a little bit challenging, and sometimes a little bit more challenging than other. Last season, it was really challenging. Yes. This uh, season, we are focusing on creativity and we are going off of prompts that we've come up with. We've come up with these prompts and um, I have designated them with a title that's a little bit cryptic. So you don't actually know exactly what you're voting for, but you guys get to vote. And I put the poll up uh, on the community tab on the YouTube channel a couple days ago and many of you have voted, but you still have time to vote tonight for what I will have to draw next week. And to vote, and also to find the photo reference that Ashley's gonna be working from tonight, you'll need to go to the YouTube channel. That means that you'll need to click on the little face, uh, the little icon of me down below this video. That will take you to the channel. And then if you look in the middle of your screen, you'll see a series of options, a series of tabs. Look for the community tab and clicking on that community tab will take you to all of the posts that I've posted there on the community tab, including tonight's photo reference. And if you scroll a little bit underneath that, you'll see the poll for what I am gonna be drawing next week. Last week, I was tasked with drawing the image. And last week, uh, my prompt was, uh, don't give me no lines. And of course, the assignment was to create a drawing that didn't use any lines. So last week, I used pastels. We created a drawing of a wave. Uh, that didn't use any lines. Mm -hmm. And last week's prompt that Ashley got was not your average pen. And of course, the assignment is to create a drawing using non-traditional drawing tools. And that's what Ashley's going to be doing tonight. And you are prepped and ready to go, are you not? That's right. I'm ch checking out our extensive drawing tools that we'll be using. If you've uh, looked ahead, you know what they are. It's, it's not that extensive. I struggled a little bit. I wanted to use non-traditional tools, but I wanted to use tools that maybe some of you would have access to. Originally, when we talked about this prompt, I imagined that I was going to whittle a pen out of wood and have a little ink reservoir in I there. I imagine that too. Yeah. yeah. And then I thought, you know, no one's going to have a whittled pen made of wood or have time to do so in 45 minutes and keep up with the drawing. So I've chosen some office supplies that you may or may not have at home. I hope you do. And if you don't, I hope you'll follow along anyway. Maybe use a pen instead of uh, the ink tools that I'll be using. Go ahead and use a pen anyway. We're still going to be working with shapes and values and lines. So um, the elements of art don't change, even if the materials do. But if you happen to have a stamp pad and a new pencil, then you can follow along. Yep, so you heard that. All you need is a stamp pad tonight. You need some paper, obviously. And you don't have to have a new pencil. You just need to have a pencil that has an intact eraser. There you go, right? there you an go. A relatively intact eraser. Right, there'll intact. be no pens or pencils tonight at all. Really, it's just an eraser and a stamp pad. Mm -hmm. and, um, I, and that is a very common material that you might have sitting around your house, you might not, uh, but I have put a link below this video. It's a uh, affiliate link, which means if you click on it and purchase from there, uh, I do make a small commission if you purchase there at no additional cost to you. Uh, now, 
We're getting ready to get into it, but if you like what you see here tonight, I would encourage you, of course, to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. And also uh, click on the notification bell so you're notified when new videos like this are uploaded. Well, not like this. When we go live, you'll be notified, of course. And then all of the videos that I make that are static videos that aren't live, you'll be notified when those are posted, of course. And if you want to go deeper with your drawing and painting skills, there is a membership program we have over at thevirtualinstructor.com, which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses on a variety of drawing and painting subject matter. There's also weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute and weekly live lessons. In fact, when we're done here on YouTube, I'll be drawing the next hour uh, with pen and ink. We're probably going to finish up the drawing tonight. I'm not really sure about that. We're close to the end of the series that we're mm -hmm. doing right now. Uh, but of course, that's part of our membership program and all of the lessons that we've ever broadcast are recorded there and stored for you in the vault over there. And there's also a year long curriculum for visual arts teachers, which includes basically everything you need to teach. All of that is included in the membership program. If you're interested in becoming a member, there's a link in the description below. You can check it out for free for seven days. We do offer a seven day free trial. And if you want to check out just three of our course videos and eBooks for free and kind of dabble a little bit, uh, then there's a link in the description below for that as well. And that will also put you on our mailing list so that when we post new content, not just here on YouTube, but site wide over there, virtualinstructor.com, you'll be notified of that as well. Okay. Welcome everybody, wherever you are all over the world. Uh, the, the chat has been scrolling pretty quickly and a lot of people put where they were from and I miss, missed a lot of those. I see Peachtree City, Georgia, um, and I think I saw Michigan. Anyway, um, I know that you guys are joining us from all over the world in all different time zones and we really, really appreciate that because yes. it is conveniently 6.30 p.m. here where we are, of course. And are you ready to go? Yeah, I think so. Let's All right. take a look at our materials. All right. Well, we'll switch over. All right. There we are. We've got the reference on the left and our picture plane on the right. Um, let's see. The picture plane, I didn't actually measure it, so let's do that now. It looks like we're at about, about three and a quarter of an inch, uh, uh, three and a quarter inches across by a little bit more maybe four and five eighths so maybe four and three quarters so sorry those aren't even inches all right so we're going to be using a stamp pad and this is mine it's it's been well used and reloaded several times so uh, when it gets a little bit uh, when it gets a little bit weak uh, we just use a liquid rollerball ink uh, refiller and run it across the running across the sponge in there. So if you've got India ink in a sponge, you might be able to just make your own stamp pad. Now, I will be, Matt said there won't be any pencil, but I will be making a brief pencil drawing, just oh. a contour line that runs down, um, that separates the positive space from the negative space, and then the general shape for the eye. I didn't know that. Yeah, so we are going to make, nope. a, we're gonna make a, a little <laughs> bit of a pencil drawing before we start, um, just to make sure we get our marks in the right place, because we are going to be working with ink. And if we don't get our ink in the right place, there's really no removing that. Now, I do have a, sec a separate piece of paper here. You might be able to see the edge of it. It is white on white. But I'll be using um, this edge and actually beyond to blot my ink. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, my relatively new pencil eraser. I did practice a little bit just to see about how dark my ink pad was and if I needed to add ink to it. So if I load my eraser and then stamp once... It's pretty dark. It's almost black. Um, that'll lighten a little bit as it dries. So what we're going to be doing to control our values is blotting, you know, two or three or more times. And you can actually get quite a few marks. Look at that nice value it's scale. It's a value scale. It's almost yeah. perfect. Instant almost value perfect. scale. Yep. So uh, we're going to be blotting um, not only on this paper, but sometimes just in the artwork. You know, we can remove a little bit of ink in a darker area and then and then move to a lighter area. So there will be some bouncing around tonight and, uh, and we'll darken areas and then revisit them and continue to build up the value. So we won't necessarily sort of finish the value as we work our way across our artwork from right to left. There will be some bouncing around. All right. Let's see. I guess that's about it. The, the now, materials are pretty, pretty uh, sparse. The, the process you're going through is very similar to what Chuck Close did with his fingerprint images, that's right. right? That's right. It's pretty much the same process. Um, I'm not sure if he used a grid and actually 
put his oh, fingerprints. His yeah, he probably, I'm sure he used. A I'm grid. sure he did, and he, <laughs> I, I'm sure he was, you know, had a calculated how many times he needed to blot his finger for each value, yes. and then place his fingerprint directly in a tiny square based on his grid. We won't be working with that kind of precision, and we're going to be doing more overlapping of our marks. So they kind of build up and in places, the circular um, shape, the circles will be more apparent. And in some of the lighter or midtones, a little bit less so from, from sort of a uh, building up lighter values to get to the dark, to get to the darker ones. So in my mind, I'm still going to kind of approach it like a wash in areas or even like a watercolor because mm -hmm. these, except for that first mark, these are transparent to some degree. June says, ha ha, Ashley is cheating. I think that was referring to the fact that you're going to use a pencil oh, yeah. to make marks. And yep. Buddy says, wow, Ashley, what a great idea. And I'm, do you still do this project with kids? Yeah, we do. I don't do it in, in the classes or courses that I have right now, but yep. it's still done each year because, um, you know, it's valuable and it rides the line valuable. between. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's very valuable. Yeah, well, it rides the line between <laughs> printmaking and and drawing. It's it's really pure drawing because it's just mark making. Right. And the yep. lesson there is if you can, any mark you can make and control the value, you can use to draw. Very good. Very good. All right. I guess let's bring up the timer. And, All right. Uh, You're and, ready to go. And get underway. All right. Now, if I can just find the timer here. There it is. All right. 45 minutes from now. All right. Here and we there's go. nothing special about this paper, right? It's just uh, this is I'm actually I'm trying to use just office supplies. So okay. this is a uh, computer paper. OK. Not only is it not special, it's less than that. So uh, that is probably not acid free. Just nope, not, not at <laughs> all. Before someone says something about it. If and it's OK. In case it's you're okay. wondering. And I'm sure this ink is not archival. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Buddy says, Somewhere we do potato we'll make stamps with kids. And yeah, potatoes yeah, are a great, oh, I forgot a great about potato medium stamps. to start uh, introducing people into block printing. Uh, All right. Edie suggests that you grow one of your fingernails and shape it into a pen nib. <laughs> Then you have your pen. I with love you at all that. Tops. Oh yeah, I love that. That you know that would be totally that disgusting is so to funny. see that happen on camera. Uh, uh, yeah, it would. All right, so it's our halfway point. Our eye starts a little bit above the halfway point, or at least the skin fold. So you just used your observation of negative and positive space initially to yeah, find that contour. My my uh, picture planes are the same proportion. So it's just thinking about this gap here. And mm -hmm. how big it is compared to the positive space, or really even just to the center of the the center of my top edge. That's what I was looking at. Um, for the bridge of the nose, a little bit there is. Again, I'm using the gap between the picture plane's edge. But if you don't have a picture plane, you know, if you're just drawing in a sketchbook, that's fine too. But that's the way um, I am uh, using the the edges of our composition to sort of sort of place my lines. No, L ask, how long are you guys doing these live classes? We we do these getting sketchy episodes in seasons. This is season 10, and each season we have 10 drawing ep episodes and then at the end we have one episode where we review all of the drawings we created uh from the season. So it's kind of like a critique. And um I think less people watch the last show because they because there's no drawing. It's a, there's no drawing. But yeah. honestly, the last episode is probably the most information packed. You know, it's also where we've had ch a chance to sort of marinate on the work that we right. did. And, uh, and can sometimes offer, I think, a better critique than in the moment. Yes, right absolutely. After, right after we've created yeah. it. We've had a little bit of chance to think about what's happened and talk to each other about it sometimes. The bicycle lady points out that some computer paper is cellulose acid free paper. Oh, I hope it's mine. <laughs> Give it a smell. <laughs> Does it pass the smell test? Can you smell that acid? <laughs> All right. I guess so you would give a it a nice acid big taste round taste, eyeball. Now, in when we use this technique in our art classes, we do portraits, and I would like to do a whole portrait and not just an eyeball. But um, you know, given the time constraints, we had to pare it down. But these uh, portraits are really impressive when they're done. They really are, and it, it's a valuable way. Again, there's that word uh, you valuable. You can't avoid it. It's a valuable way to teach the importance of value. Probably to like an intermediate level student in high school, I would say. Is that what level you typically did this? Yeah, that's summer? right. Level two, level three, mm -hmm. either one of those. 
All right, we'll just take a look at our shape here. Our ellipse, you know, it's, a, it's on a curve, so like opposite of an ellipse, the far side is a little bit rounder, and the, the side of the circle or iris that's closer to us, a little less so. All right, now the highlight in there is what's so attractive. The highlight is tricky business yeah. with the eraser, yeah. huh? Yeah, it is going to be. Because there's some small, intricate shapes in there. We can really make two marks with our eraser. You know, we can make this one also. Oh, yeah, you can go right. Oh, look oh, at that. Oh, look at that. Nice that. line there. So we, we, that's kind of why I thought this artwork, because it does have texture in the eyebrow uh -huh. and also the eyelashes, maybe we could take advantage of that, that second mark. Noel says, you guys are super good artists. Thank you, Noel. Oh, that's, we You're appreciate that. You're a super good that. commenter. Thank you for joining us. And Margaret oh. says, and awesome teachers. Thank you, Margaret. I would just get a shape out here. That's really what just we love to do best is, is teach. But we also like to have fun, too. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like to try to have fun teaching. Right. In a perfect world, we're all having fun. Well, it's, it's a lot more fun teaching when there's not all that red tape, you know? You, right. You when it's you pure know, teaching. You, right. It's the teaching. I don't think most teachers mind the teaching part at all. No, most it's teachers the stuff love that the happens teaching part. Before school and after school and in the meetings and right. staff developments. And I know those things are all important, but they're not what we what we envisioned when we started getting involved with young people. Oh, so with attitudes. Maybe it's, yeah. All kinds of stuff. All right. Finishing our shape. We're just about, I think we're just about ready to start stamping. Just take a minute. And make Looks it, like a pretty make, good contour line drawing in place there. And if there's some small discrepancies, uh, we're going to go with it because of the, you know because it is a sketch. Now you're not we drawing. We can make some an, adjustments in the ink as well. Now you're not drawing an outline for the eyebrow. Is is that, is nah, that going to be more put of that a fluid transition? Nah, I'll or? put that in there too. At least part of it. Just the bottom and top line, it just kind of fade away. Yeah, it looks kind of like it's got a hard line on the bottom and yeah. kind of a softer transition at the top. Something like that. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty fuzzy up there. I need to make an appointment. <laughs> <laughs> There's some place at the mall that does. Right, there we go. Like hair braiding or something. What they like use? String. You mean threading? Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen right. that? I'm oh, sure yeah. you're probably familiar with uh, that. My wife's cosmetologist, so I hear about all these kind of stuff. That, like that's threading. fascinating to me that they can like remove hair with like floss or something. I, I guess so. Instead I'm of, never going to do you know, that. Instead of wax or anything like that. Right. It's an interesting, I've seen it. I think it happens kind of fast or it looks to be fast. I don't know. I could probably stand it. Now that's stand an interesting to approach it. to erasing what you've got there on the surface. So it's just a little bit lighter. Yeah, that's right. I want the pencil lines to kind of dissolve. And uh, most of the pencil lines are up against the areas that have a dark value or a medium value, like the one out here on the contour mm -hmm. of the face. So they'll probably disappear in there as long as they're not too heavy. All right, not too bad. So we've spent about seven minutes on the drawing, and uh, I think that'll give us time to complete our artwork. Now, I like to start in a darker area because I'm less likely to make a mistake in the darker area. So we're going to begin up here and then uh, kind of bounce around from there and probably return up here and continue to darken it as we go. Uh, you might be able to hear me blot my eraser, or you might not, but it is a little bit of a noisy process sometimes. So... And you can right, imagine if you have a classroom of students doing that, it's right. It sounds really like rain, wild. but it's not. It's not unbearable loud here. No. And if there's enough people doing it, you know, it turns into like a white noise. <laughs> so you can see I'm overlapping the circles instead of trying to like make a mark and like like move in rows and control mm -hmm. my value like I, like I was kind of demonstrating over here. It's already progressing really quickly. Um, well, so you know, we will cover space fast, but we'll have to revisit areas because I don't want to get too dark too soon since we are working with ink. Mm -hmm. Jennifer says, I agree about teaching. I enjoy it so much more since I went freelance. And Brent Does Art says, Surratt might like this project. Oh, yeah. Now, you know, i tell you what I love about Surratt are his charcoal drawings. And it's, it's partly because of his choice of paper. Uh, the, yeah, tooth, right. the tooth of the paper that he used just really enhanced his artwork. Yeah. Yeah, they were very smoky atmosphere. Yeah, they are. Uh, Orion Nebula says, well, is that an ink pad? Yeah, there's an ink pad off screen. That's right. 
Here it is. Yeah, there we go. I know it looks glittery under the lights, but it's it just a. It's very fabulous. Right. It's just a uh, just a re kind of a regular it's sweat sponge in there. Now, occasionally <laughs> I do roll the eraser a little bit because the ink does build up around the edge, and you'll see the your marks start to develop a little bit of a darker mm -hmm. ring, and that's okay. I mean, it's part of the part of the look here. But I don't want it to become too excessive. What is that prank people do where you put something up to your eye and it creates a dark ring around it? You know what I'm talking about? There's you mean not of... get enough sleep? No, no, no. no. <laughs> That's how I get dark There's rings around my eyes. There's some kind of prank <laughs> that... You oh, yeah, like, like binoculars. You put something. like a yeah. shoe polish. When people used to polish their shoes, there were a lot of pranks for shoe polish. Yeah. So uh, you put like black shoe polish around uh, binoculars and hold them close to your eyes and then sh let's say show them to somebody else say hey look at that bird over there and they get the rings <laughs> around their eyes these are classic pranks look at that bird over there look at that bird over there that's what i do with my binoculars you keep them loaded up with I, shoe polish no i keep them <laughs> i use them to look at birds <laughs> I'm a bird watcher, man. We have binoculars at the beach, and for the most part, we just use them to look at other people. Yeah, we definitely, yeah. I'm checking out the waves. Well, the way the place <laughs> is set up, it's perfect to like, it's just like rear window. You know that. You've been there. Yeah. Uh, where you can you can see everybody into everybody's. Yeah, right. Um, so do you ever course. look around with binoculars and see someone looking back at you with binoculars? <laughs> <laughs> that would startle creepy, me. It? it sounds creepy. I, like that I'm, would startle me. I would avoid that person from thereafter <laughs> in the parking lot. Uh, All right, we're just Susan developing says a this range. is a woodpecker lesson, so I guess <laughs> I guess she can hear it. I guess it. they hear I it. I guess she can hear it. I could be more gentle, but it's slower. You know, it's a little slower. There we well, go. Well, if you're gentle, you won't have that aggression in your marks. That That's true. That's probably true. totally not necessary. Now, we're going to put... <laughs> some thinner marks, some linear marks up here in the eyebrows, but I'm going to tone the area anyway, keeping in mind that the middle of the eyebrow is pretty light. But we're just going to go ahead and get sort of some undervalues in here that are dark-ish gray, not as dark as the eyebrow will eventually need to be. Now we can get, you can get creative. I'm using some half circles here. You know, I'm kind of tilting, tilting my eraser backwards a little bit. So um, depends on how much variety you have a tolerance for. Do you want to just use pure circles if you're using an eraser or not, like maybe your fingerprints? Um, or do you want to manipulate uh, how you're holding the pencil to get some, uh, some variety in your marks? Now, after this, uh, after this presentation, if you want to see, you know, some of the work that Chuck Close did with his fingerprint mm -hmm. paintings, I guess. That's I, right. I'm, I'm not drawing. Sure I would call them drawings because you know, they're mark making. Yeah. And, and ink's one of those things that's weird. You know, a painting technically is using a liquid medium. Right. And ink is actually a liquid medium. True. But we call it We call drawing, them drawings. You know. uh, so anyway, I would encourage you to do that. Go check out Chuck Close fingerprint fingerprint paintings or stamp paintings. I'm, I'm sure you'd see some examples. So really... Uh, Pretty crazy, and I think I saw one in person in San Francisco. I want to say oh, yeah? I saw one of them. I saw several Chuck Close works when I was out there, and they were pretty impressive to see in person. Uh, I imagine. I mean, they're so big, typically. Yeah, but even you can't really appreciate even, them small or on even your phone. Th how large they are when you look at the precision and control of it's the media, still there. It's still it doesn't break down. Pretty impre right? Yeah, because I, I mean, right. I love artwork that kind of does dissolve a little bit when you get close. I'm thinking of like Janet Fish. Her right. artwork seems so precise, and then when you get close, the marks are very clear and sometimes not really sort of fussed over or worked in, you mm -hmm. know, manipulated after they've gone down. So just, a, I guess, a different temperament, but that can be nice too. All right, buddy, ask Ashley, do you use a normal ink pad as in an old, as in old age when it was used in, in an office? Um, possibly. Yeah, these were, the, our first ink pads came from our school's office supply office mm -hmm. and then since then as the as we kind of um, continue to to do this as an assignment um we've ordered more that have only been probably used for drawing 
And now you got to really see the eyeball as a ball. You know, the, the shadow goes across um, the top eyelid, the bottom eyelid, and the white of the eye. And you can really kind of see the whole value progress across there, which is little bits of light in the darker area and little bits of dark in the lighter area. So I want to keep that in mind. It's really round like that. Oh yeah, dot, dot, dot in a way. Mm -hmm. So this is a rather small surface area that you're working on. You can imagine if you decided to take this process and make it a, a really large image, you know, we're just talking about how a lot of works that we see in reproduction are actually a lot larger. Right. Then and they look so we, different in person right. than on a phone screen. The way I view artwork a lot of times now, right? Like yeah. A four inch rectangle. It looks like Peter has just looked up something. He just said, "Holy moly, his drawings are huge." Yeah, yeah, they yeah really they're are. like nine feet. So they're crazy big. Um, Brenda says, "Is Ashley really a bird watcher? One of my favorite activities." Oh yeah, I sure am, and I and I look them up. And what is your favorite bird to watch there? Gosh. Um, around my house i have uh quite a few woodpeckers and hawks and yeah. so they're i like to look at those they're kind of uh, exotic ish uh -huh. you know for our area i mean i see a hawk every day yeah pretty much but they're still nice to look at but i love watching uh, catching the, the woodpeckers and they're not hard to find because they're so noisy and they kind of uh kind of go along with our theme here have you seen that movie about bird watching i don't know I, it's i think it has something to do with the word year i think it says the something in the title of the the movie i don't know it's uh i think it has steve martin in it and uh jack black oh i would love to see that if i haven't i think i would like that uh i'm sure somebody in the comments can help me out with that brent does art says i've done this with markers might try this method very good a lot, a lot of people have never seen anything like this and are, are really excited, I think, uh, yeah. judging by what I'm reading in the comments here. Oh, uh, good. I hope so. Uh, Luna asks, Ashley, how tempted are you to try and draw with the edge of, a, of the eraser to fill the area quicker? Mm. I think maybe mean, they're suggesting scrubbing it instead of doing the line work. You know? um, I have, I'm not tempted at all. It didn't cross my mind. But now that you mention it, no, I'm, I'm going to stick with this method and I might try that. See how it goes. See how it works. It might be like working with a stump, kind of, you know. Okay, Sue says it's it's called the Big Year. Thank you, Sue. What's that? that movie? The movie. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. About bird watching. All right. Now you know I don't want to lose like the thickness of the eyelid right here. That's great. So I'm I'm getting pretty dark in the cornea, and then below that is a uh, dark gray with that little light gray that little light gray edge and then dark gray below that so we're gonna have to be a little careful there you know the darkness of the ink is um, not as dark as it can be um, it's with the first uh, you know with the first strike even if it's not blotted all right again we're gonna we're gonna do some jumping around as certain areas get darker it'll give me the the confidence to revisit and get darker in in uh, places that we've we've started. Maybe and, seen and that's primarily because first. value is relative, right? Yeah, that's right. You don't really understand the value that you're putting down until you have a value near it to make a comparison. That's right. It's all about uh, comparing and contrasting the contrast. <laughs> Edie says, "I've seen this done with a technical pen, but not with an eraser." And I think when you when it's done with a technical, this might be what you're referring to. It's called stippling. Uh, when you make a lot of oh, right. small dots. Yeah. Um, Similar. And someone suggested earlier on that this would be called eraserism. <laughs> <laughs> and Keith adds the big years based on a book and well worth well well worth a read. So if you want to read the, about bird watching. Well, it'll make it last longer. Again. The book, I always read a lot slower than I watch a movie because so much has to be left out. So... It's a, but the, the movie's good, though, because Steve Martin and Jack Black. Yeah. All right. Well, we've got, uh, let's see. I think we're doing pretty well on time. We've still got 26 minutes to go. We're starting to get to the fun part. We're zooming, or closing in on it gradually. Funky Groove says, Ashley watch birds all day long? 
Just don't play with swords. <laughs> yeah. you gotta watch I just Ashley go out in the backyard and, and swing my katana around. Medieval Look at weapons. birds. He's looking to slay a bird. <laughs> slay a blue jay. Oh, I love the way blue jays look, but they are... They're, they have the worst voice <laughs> of, all, of all the birds in my backyard. I think I appreciate listening to Blue Jay the least. They're just so aggressive. They don't tolerate other birds on their territory. All right, now looking down here next to the nose, um, the pocket, the little uh, shadow underneath the eye is darker than the bridge of the nose next to it. But as we get low, eh, it's about the same, maybe about the same, maybe even a little lighter than the bridge of the nose next to it. So we'll use the nose to help kind of guide us here and then get back up into this business, the thickness of the bottom eyelid that I don't want to lose because those, uh, those eyelids, they're not, uh, they're not paper thin. They've got some dimension to them. Colleen says, way back in the Stone Age of my high school art classes in the 70s, we called this pointillism. And Colleen, if, if your teacher Almost. called this pointillism, I understand that. But pointillism is actually the process of making small dots with a painting. It's uh, the Color is sort of a requirement for right. pointillism, different yes. than stippling. Yes. And we could do that. If we had different colored ink pads, I could stack red and blue oh, that would be cool. marks to create yeah. Have purple. you done that before? No. All I you have, need is like three colors. All but you that, need is red, yellow, and blue. Yeah, that would actually be really cool. And, and then, it, then it would, in fact, be pointillism. Um, so that would but be, we are not snobbish here. No, 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 no. We, you can call it pointillism if you want, and we'll know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, if you want to think about it as pointillism <laughs> or stippling, like huge stippling, you know, you can do that if that's what uh, makes sense to you. I think about it as watercolor because I'm building up translucent marks on top of each other. So that's kind of the, in my mind, you know, I'm making like a, like an ink wash drawing, but without a brush. So that's kind of how I'm relating to the process. Tammy says, been a while since I've been able to catch the live. Yay. I don't see this technique often done. No, that's very true. I don't think a lot of people know about this technique. Yeah, it's really borrowed directly from Chuck Close's fingerprint yeah. ideas. Susan would like to call it dotalism. Dotalism. I like that. That sounds like a condition. <laughs> He's got yeah, dot, dot dotalism. He's got dotalism. Not botulism. <laughs> You've been diagnosed with dotalism. All right. We'll go ahead and get into the eye a little bit. And then, and you know, we need to get this toned down and that'll go pretty fast but let's go ahead and slow down for a minute and get into the iris so there is some areas that feel pretty black in there all along the edge of our highlight and then of course the the ring around the iris on the portion that's closer to us yeah i think when you add those lines even in some of those areas where we've got uh those you know overlapping circles it's going to really bring everything together yeah i think so late stages late stages you know we'll get the whole drawing in place and hopefully have time to continue to go around and uh and revisit and hone in our values and that's really good control you've got going right against the edge of the uh highlight there the highlight just just tilting the eraser a little bit. Buddy asks, if you would like to use archival ink and paper, what pad would you suggest? Is there any? Um, I don't know that there is one, but what I would do is uh, just get a, get a stamp pad that's free of ink and probably... Well, not free of ink, free of acid. Did well, you, yeah. Well, I would pour, you know. Oh, just, free of and, ink. And, You're talking about yeah. make your own. Make your own. I gotcha. And I then guess. put India ink in there. Oh, yeah. That's not a bad idea. You know, I, that's what I would try. I can't guarantee that that'll work and the India ink will perform in this way or predictable way, but that's what I would try. It's kind I of make my own. I wonder if you could own. use a sponge. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like yeah. just get a, get a flat sponge. Just yeah. Try to make your own. You know, having a lid is what's going to keep it from drying out, ideally. But, uh, you know, if it's sort of a one-time deal, you're going to make a drawing with it for a day or two, and that's it. You don't even really need yeah. to worry too much about having uh, a lid. 
All right, just working in the areas that feel black, black to me still. And some of that's going to, now we'll go ahead and get into the top of the eye. When you, when you squint your eyes and look at what you've got there on the surface, it, you can really see those values develop and how you're gradually getting darker. Yeah. So, and, you know, I'm a big value scale guy. Try to shade all the way down to the darkness you see from the very beginning of the drawing. Um, but in this case, I'm thinking more like an ink wash and we'll kind of build up, build up our layers. Sue asked, would a, a stay wet sponge work? I'm not sure what a stay wet sponge is. Do you know what a stay wet um, It sounds like it would work because you don't want your ink drying out. And Pat says, perhaps a piece of felt with India ink would work? Question mark. Yeah. Maybe so. Maybe a couple of like a couple of layers, you know, stack it up. And a scarf and tea says there is an archival ink pad by Ranger here in Canada. I see it at Craft Store. So there apparently is something that exists out there. You know, there for a while the 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 uh, stamp craze was going on there. I don't know. How, I mean, that was yeah, I remember ago, that. But. I remember, and we had like gold shimmery <laughs> stamp pads and right. red ones all over the place. I don't know if that's still going on or not, but uh, you know. Lord yeah. Engine says, effect looks like charcoal on stone. Hmm. Hmm. Um, and Jennifer smoky. says, a small Tupperware type box would keep it moist if you made your own. Yeah, there you so go. That makes sense. Creativity. We're doing it. We're doing it together. Yeah. And that's what our season's about. And Buddy points out that there are tons of pads without ink online. And she suggests Amazon, very, very cheap. So yeah, there you go. All right. Now we'll start using the tool a little bit more linearly here in a few minutes. I already did that just a little bit around the edge of the front edge of our iris. And you're just over halfway. Oh, that's 19 minutes remaining. So I think we're in a uh, good place. Already got a good amount of information there. Pretty on the good surface. base. Really cool. And there is a little bit of white. I mean, some of this will stay nearly white. Maybe okay, not, Shelley, ask a, a interesting not that question. White. Ashley, what consideration for choosing this photo for this media, please? So, well, I, I wanted this? to choose a photo where I could use both marks, the, both the the circle and the line that we mm -hmm. can get from our eraser. So that's something I was looking at and something that had smoother transitions of value. So that's that's kind of what I had in mind um, before I before I you know selected an image. I had a feeling it was. You know, I was leaning toward portraiture once I decided, or something, it's, I guess it's not a portrait, but it's a facial feature, portrait-like, um, just because some people, you young people out there, have pretty smooth skin and uh, a nice smooth transitions between those values. So I thought that would be applicable, but it doesn't have to be. You know, you can choose an entirely different subject matter and see how it goes. I've done objects before, like staplers and ink and glue bottles and all the kinds of art supplies that we typically might see. Um, in an art room. I've used those items for um, examples to, to do under the document camera before because they're a little faster than this. Karen and Pat point out that archival ink is available. And uh, Tammy asks, is your hand getting tired? Not at all. Not anymore. But I can remember a Ages ago, my hand would hurt so bad after class in art school because I'd been holding a tool for all day, like eight hours, and you know. But every morning you do your your hand workout now, like yeah. finger push ups and I don't sit up. I don't. I don't know. I guess you just get used to it. You used to finger lifts. Tool. Yeah, Pink, that's pinky right. Curls, like uh, finger squats. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Funky Groove says, looks fabulous. At one point, I thought it maybe should have been a larger sketch area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, this is a small area. And oh, yeah, this is, quite pretty, a bit of precision. this is pretty small. I wish it were bigger, but we, you know, it, the, our time limit does play a factor it into does, some yeah. of our decisions. Yeah, but and that was one for here. You know, it would be great if this was the whole size of a sheet. We'd be here a little bit beyond uh, 730 you no know. but the the amount of precision and detail you're getting in this small area is really impressive 
-hmm. Thanks. Thanks. Looks really good. Really nice. Um, Cindy has a good question. Have you ever done this with white ink on black paper? No. Mm, no, I have not. That would be cool. I did have a student do some traditional stippling with a white paint pen on black, like a black piece of foam core, mm -hmm. and that um, came out pretty well. Did I say white or silver? What did I say? You said white. Okay, I meant silver. Yeah. Oh, silver. I meant silver, yeah. but, it, but it was like white, you know, because yeah. it's light. So it had that same similar kind of effect. Yeah, so it was with silver ink. Silver Mar paint pen. Margie says, what this shows is that you can do beautiful artwork with very inexpensive art supplies. That's, that's right. That's very true. That's yeah. right. That's one of the one of the lessons here, I guess. Edie says, it looks to me like the graphic in an ad for an eye doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing dots? Come in and see us. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We'll help sharpen things up. Now I'm just taking this uh, eraser and just kind of rolling it, and it wants to make a curve anyway. Yeah, so cool. That is yeah. so cool. So it's just uh, kind of, as long as you get your hand turned right, it should make uh, the desired curve right out of that position. Wow, this, is, this is looking really, really nice. Some of these we may have to hit a second time after we uh, get, fill in the background some. You know, this approach, you know, people are pointing out a larger image and we've talked about the larger image. This might be a good um, idea for a live lesson series to do a larger one. Oh, yeah. And a full one. Yeah. The whole thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, they can be so impressive when they're big enough and you yeah. can get all, of the, all the, of the features in there. If it happens to be a, uh, a portrait that you're doing, I think. And honestly... Personally, I like using super light dots and really build little building them up over time. So you almost do lose the circles, but that is that is really time consuming because you're you're blotting on every stroke almost. All right, I'm gonna blot a little bit of the edge of the eraser just to get some grayer strokes in here. Yeah, because there is variety in those eyelashes. Yeah, they They're start to fade away black. a little bit yeah. over here. And I, I know it's partially because it's out of focus. All right, now these down here would be great if I were left-handed. I'm going to have to go slow with these. Maybe I can, maybe I can still make them with my right hand over the marks. That works. All right, Buddy says this approach might be perfect for watercolor too if you need a perfect curve. Shelly says vote yes to doing this as a live lesson series. Jen seconds that. June says my son did the Joker in high school. It looks amazing. I'm assuming using this uh, oh, technique, cool. maybe. Um, and Edie says the soft focus look is quite nice. We have about 12 minutes, so I think we're still going to be okay, but we are going to go to the wire. We have another interesting question here. Should an artist in general use both hands or at least practice with both hands? What are your thoughts on that one? You mean to Ashley? draw with both hands? I'm assuming. I'm assuming. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I had a student there. that held his pencil with both hands, and he drew really well. It was interesting to watch. There is a drawing exercise now, that I, I brush my teeth with my non-dominant hand periodically to try to build up fine motor skills. In the event <laughs> that I lose my right hand, Are I am not, not all kidding. You have to do is do your hand exercises. In, I'm like, yeah. well, you know, it's so delicate. When I brush my teeth with my left hand, yeah, it's like there's a truck inside my mouth just banging around. Like I have no control, <laughs> um, but I'm trying to develop that because it's such, it's so tedious. You're right. just barely flinching back and forth my, and up and down. My teeth are so small. <laughs> I can put the entire toothbrush in my mouth and not touch a tooth. <laughs> oh my, oh my. I have to go. That's going to make go, me laugh. I have to go searching for them. <laughs> it's um, a search and rescue operation in there. <laughs> mm. Um, 
All right, let's get into. Yeah, I'm not I'm sure get back if you need here. to practice at both hands unless you're preparing for a day when you are, lose your dominant hand or something like that. But it is, it's not a bad exercise to practice drawing with your non-dominant hand as an exercise in observation because I think a lot of people when I used to do that with students, yeah, um, and. I think people are really surprised how much of drawing actually happens in their mind. Just like Michelangelo says, right? You know, your left hand or right hand, if it's if you're left-handed, your non-dominant hand, it might not make highly controlled lines, but it can still kind of get them about where they're supposed to go. Right, and that's what's exactly. that's what's really important, even if they're not um, really like sort of delicate, um, highly controlled curves, maybe a little jerky. Those are, that's, I mean, some people draw that way anyway. Some people have a rough handwriting. It's just the way they make marks, even with their, even with their dominant hand. Well, my son is really interesting. My son is really athletic and um, he throws football and baseball with his right hand. He bats right hand, right handed, but for some reason he dribbles incredibly well with his left hand and shoots with his left hand it makes no sense yeah, at that, all that doesn't he's got coordination to dribble with his I left think hand he was actually left-handed and that forced him into being right-handed we wondered about that with our son because <laughs> he's got questionable handwriting because i i question it when i see it because i can't read it <laughs> like, what that's what right here that's what makes it questionable what, is this what does this say right and uh, he's he told us that that a, a teacher um, took his pencil and took it out of his left hand when he was a kid and put it in his oh, right hand. I don't know yeah. if I believe that. I think he's just telling us that. He's because, making an excuse. Yeah, because I saw something he wrote one time that was super neat. And I can't remember what we were doing. I had him do some sort of exercise, and it was super neat. And Maybe I think he's going to be a doctor. I think it comes down to, <laughs> you're right, it's just uh, how much he cares to write neatly, and he doesn't. <laughs> All right, we've got some marks in there. Yeah, those eyebrows look great. Yeah. And they, you know. You did your own threading there. There you go. <laughs> Boy, when you get that dark in the background, yeah. it's going to really yeah, it's, I think it's important to start getting that in here now. Yeah. Well, you still have eight minutes. Yeah. A, a little bit more than eight minutes, actually. It's closer to nine minutes. But. And the, the clock is a suggestion. It's a suggestion we try to adhere to, but yeah, we like to we like to make it. You know, we like to finish by the bell, so to speak. But sometimes a piece just needs another minute. I think you guys can understand that. Barbara says this is amazingly good. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying the process so far. I mean, it can be frustrating too because you want to get a real sharp pinpoint sometimes and and be able to get into and uh, accurately capture the shapes and the detail that you're observing but uh some, we kind of have to find a happy medium between what we see and the uh characteristics you might call them limitations but just characteristics of our of our selected medium It's starting to build up some rings, so I'm just going to roll the edge of my eraser a little bit. I like to have a little bit more variety out here. It doesn't have to be quite so smooth. I can kind of show off the process a little bit in the empty space. Edie says, I don't know why some parents are so hung up about a left-handed child making them be right-handed. What's the big deal if one child's a lefty? I don't think that's it so much. There might be people out there that yeah, want to make I've, their kid right-handed. It's crossed my mind that people might want to do that because the world is in some ways still set up for right-handed people. I guess so, You know, like yeah. when we, ha we give standardized tests in the school system, and sometimes we have to scrounge around to find the left-handed desk for a left-handed student oh, so yeah, the armrest right. yeah. is on the side that they need for four and a half hours while they're testing. Right. You know, so right. it's 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 simpler on you if you're right-handed. Um, maybe that's it. Not because 
um, they think that your uh, spawn of Satan or any sort of uh, old no, wives' no, no, tales no, no. like well, that, I, you know, I, just for maybe there's a practical reason a person could feel that way. Well, as a parent, you, you kind of assume that your children are going to be right-handed because that is the majority. So, um, and it, at a young age, it's hard. To, you know, it's hard to really discern. Um, so, yeah, it's true when they're little. I think and maybe wonder, many parents switch their child just because they don't know. <laughs> uh, could that, be. Uh, you know, they, in, they incidentally put things in their right hand. Right. Not, exactly. not because they're consciously thinking right. about it. All right. Here comes the highlight. There we go. And Brenda says that work in the background is bringing it to life. Love this process. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty awesome, pretty cool. And then with, with this highlight on here, it's going to really, really pop. Getting that uh, darker value in the background made the face, um, you know, pop out to the foreground. And look at all that intricate detail you can get with the end of an eraser. <laughs> pretty crazy. Got some kind of a window reflection in here. It really doesn't matter if we understand what we're looking at. And oh, I think yeah, that looks, I believe there's a tree there in awesome. the middle. We got, there's a little tree right here we've got to get in there. So no, it's just a little gray, <laughs> a gray patch. I don't know if it's a tree or not. There's a little tiny skull in there, like <laughs> oh, ooh, we missed our chance. Yeah, start over. We're gonna get a skull in here. Wall it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have another piece of paper? <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Two little gray pieces coming in over here. All right, let's see. We've got four minutes. Four minutes. I think we just need to get darker. Melody is asking that at the end, uh, if you can zoom out a little bit. So yeah, that's a good a idea. Distance. I think that's a good idea. Thanks, Melody. Jen says just dot, 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 wow. <laughs> um, let's see. Buddy points out that she thinks it's a tree in the reflection. And that's right. That's what I think, too. Edie says it's the remains of a spy balloon. <laughs> <laughs> it's caught in the trees. It's drifting We down. found it. This person is standing on the coast of Myrtle Beach. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's where the first one ended up. All right. So for the next three minutes or so, we'll just dot away. <laughs> Be careful Excellent. that you don't get dotalism from that. <laughs> And the more of this we can do. What had happened was, says, this is awesome. <laughs> so is your your YouTube name. Um, I have had been working on challenging myself with new things, but I would not have thought of this. All right. We're finally getting into, you know, I feel like I feel better with just a sliver of white in there. So I'm just getting just some very faint marks in the whiter areas. Maybe just the ring of the erasers. You know, in a it few looks, places. That looks really awesome. Just for actually. harmony in there. Really, really well done. Pat Thank says, you. on the news, it seems that North Carolina will enjoy very warm weather. Is this true? Oh, well, yeah. Tomorrow, it's going to be 84 degrees. Yeah, it is so, springtime yeah. in uh, North Carolina. That is, that's true. Yep. But then it's going to get cold next week, down into the 60s. Brr. Yeah. That's sarcastic. It'll be, it'll be, uh, <laughs> it'll feel cold after this week, I guess. I don't know. If that, I, I, 60s, 60s are still feels great. 60s, I can still yeah, wear you know? t-shirts in, Especially uh, in, in the 60s. Especially in February. My gosh. It's pretty unbelievable. We usually have at least Who one said winter storm. global warming wasn't, wasn't fun, you know? I mean, this, I love the, <laughs> love wearing t-shirts. Love wearing t-shirts. Don't joke about it. <laughs> um. All right. Yeah, and, and for those of you who don't want to wait for the zooming out, you can squint your eyes and look at the drawing. Yeah, that's right. And Take that kind of gets squint. rid of all the little circle edges. I do need to get some gray up in here. I'm just, I know there's things I'm not seeing and I'm missing just because uh, 
you know, we almost make marks constantly in, uh, when we're doing getting sketchy. And I kind of like to sometimes just put my pencil down and look for a little while. So maybe some small things that we're that I'm leaving out or missing, well, but artsy me says there are lines under the eye, so maybe that helps. Oh, uh, oh. let's <laughs> get some of those in there. Um, oh, no, Orion Nebula says, how do you keep the ink lighter in some areas? At the very beginning, he you see that value scale on the right side. He demonstrated how when you when you dip the eraser in the ink, it's strong at first, but when after each consecutive dab on the paper, it gets a little bit lighter. So that's how he's controlling the values. Um, when when he zooms out in a minute, you'll see all the dabs on the spare paper that uh, he used to make the values lighter in areas. All right, 55 seconds. Hmm. Well, you made it underneath the time limit. What's that? You you made it in underneath the time limit. I think so. Yeah, made it just in time. Just to get a little darker in there. All right. Let's mm. get a little bit darker up to underneath there. A little bit. I like that better. Just gonna get. Just gonna tone that white down, so that the highlight's a little stronger in there. I think. All right. Time's up. Time's up. All right. I guess. Guess we can zoom out a I little guess bit. We can stop. Hard to Charles stop. Charles says this is so impressive. I agree. I, I agree. It's um, a cool. It's a cool process, isn't it? It is really cool. I process. love it. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's a great right. way to understand value. Um, Let's zoom out a little bit. Yeah, zoom it out. And Whoops. we'll go in zoom first. In. There you go. Now you can see out. the stamp pad and there we go. The mess of the dots over there. <laughs> You can see where I was, you know, rolling the edge a lot just to blot the ink off the edge where it builds up, or to make a gray a grayer mark um, where I needed a lighter linear mark. So that's it. Pretty much brought to you by um, Chuck Close, and uh, and then sort of re envisioned here at Getting Sketchy with erasers instead of our fingerprints. Now, if you wanted to work with your fingerprints to make a non-traditional ink drawing this way, um, you would need to go much, much larger. You can only imagine how big the marks would be. It would be, I guess it would probably be about six or eight times larger than these. So that eye would need to be somewhere along the lines of this order. And that would be a lot of fun to do. All right, just real quick, Edie says, wow, it came out great, it's a unique look. Jan says, this is one of the most impressive artworks on this show, and that says a lot. Wow. Colleen says, incredible. Brenda says, amazing. I would have never thought it would be so beautiful. A Scarf and a T, and T says, love it. Hoot and Holler says, very nice. Ashley. Jennifer says, that's impressive. A couple impressives. June says, Thank you wow. so much. I lots, love these comments. Lots. There's so many comments. Shelly says, awesome job and a very interesting technique. Very good. And that drawing is tiny, but I only have black wing pencils, someone says. Anyway, that one kind of got... Uh, Mixed up in all the impressiveness. <laughs> um, all right. So now. Oh, yeah. Now it is time. I'll get the oh, glow sorry. off of Ashley. Sorry. That, was, that was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I turned the camera on him when he was I'm still radio, glowing. I'm radioactive Yeah, over people here. don't know that we're radioactive while we're drawing. And then, uh, mm -hmm. and then once the drawing's and over. And then we, we just cool down. They right. immerse See, look, us. They, right. Look, now I'm, he's no I'm longer not, radioactive. I've been immersed into some cool water <laughs> and re-emerged. Um, no more meltdown. Right. <laughs> anyway, it is now time. The voting is over um, for what I'm going to be doing next week. And it is time now to uh, play our game show to find out what Yay. it is uh, so let's do it ladies and gentlemen it's time for let's get creative with your contestants Matt and Ashley and now tonight's let's get creative challenge all right, so as you can see, I am surrounded now by choices, and uh, you guys have voted. 
Uh, there are only five options. I can only put in five options at the time. And uh, we're ready to reveal what I'm going to be drawing. Well, not what I'm going to be drawing, but the prompt that I'll have to follow next week. And I'll open up the voting just like I did this week, mm -hmm. uh, probably next Tuesday or Monday. So keep an eye on the channel so that you can vote what for what Ashley's prompt will be the week after next. But I think Ashley did a fantastic job tonight. But let's find out what I'm going to be doing next week. And yes. it's going to be... Oh, what's it gonna be? Less is more. I think it. Less is more. Less is more. Less is um, more. I'm not hmm. sure if that just popped up or. If, yeah, I think it just popped. Just up. popped up. It there just was, popped up. It was immediately selected. No. It must have been overwhelming. No drama there. It must have been 100% um, uh, votes for less is right. more. I don't know. Um, so what does that mean? Well, that means uh, ah. that I'm gonna have to create a drawing that uses four or less values. Value is the darkness or lightness of color. Ashley tonight worked I with see. probably about seven or eight different values at mm -hmm. least. So we're talking about spreading those values out, seeing a little clear difference between them, and uh, uh, and limiting yourself. Yes, I'm going to have to simplify the subject down into four or less values, and then treat those as shapes of value instead of gradations of value. This so, is going to be a, a uh, I think this will be. A, a, I hate to use the word valuable again. It's, it's going to be a useful lesson. It's going to be useful. Yeah, because when we, you know, start a complicated drawing, we always want to simplify it in our mind. So yeah. watching Matt simplify the drawing down to just four values and keep them there, I think will allow us to see how an artist needs to see in order to um, gradually develop really complicated artwork. Definitely. And um, I'm excited to, to uh, create that piece for you next week and uh, hopefully you'll follow along. Uh, I'm not sure what medium I'm going to use at this point. Uh, in my mind, I'm, you know, one possibility is colored pencils using very specific grays uh, that could make that could make it hmm. so that I have to use those particular values. Yeah, you could do that. Uh, but I'm not decided yet on what medium I'm going to use yet, or obviously what subject. But again, this season's all about creativity. And sometimes, a lot of times, creativity comes when there are limitations in place. So you're, you're noticing, hopefully, even though that we this will only be the third prompt that you're, uh, you've been exposed to, Hopefully you're noticing that we're putting limitations and that is where the creativity is going to come true. from. Uh, Ashley's limitation this past week, of course, was that he couldn't use a traditional drawing pen or pencil. Um, and mine prior to that was I couldn't use any lines. Next week, I won't be able to use all the values that exist out there. I'll have to simplify things down. That's right. These prompts and, are really taking things away from right, us is what right. they are. And that's where creativity mm. lies. Uh, yeah. You know, when you have the whole world open to you, a lot of times we have too many choices, but... Uh, when we have limitations, a lot of times that's where the creativity comes. You know, there's a quote us. I can't quote by Salvador Dali about that very same thing. But yeah. if you're if you like Salvador Dali, there's a lot of great quotes by him. So you might you might try to see if you can find it. But he was you know he was talking about setting limitations on yourself as an artist, and I found it so perplexing when I read that because looking at his art, it seemed like he had no limitations. Right. He was willing to do anything in yeah. his art, it seemed, but in his own mind, he had lines that he wouldn't cross. It might be in terms of technique. I doubt it was in terms of subject matter, probably in terms <laughs> of technique, but he still had limitations or lines he wasn't going to cross. And inside of that, he was able to be as creative as we witnessed just by looking at his art. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed tonight's session. I definitely did. Ashley did a fantastic job. Uh, the piece worked out great, and he did it inside mm -hmm. of the time limit. And I think that uh, this process that you guys were exposed to it was brand new to a lot of you, and I think that that's valuable to you, of course. <laughs> and uh, next week we'll be working with value again, obviously, and I look forward to creating that drawing for you at the same time next week. So I hope to see you all then or at least see you in the chat box. Again, if you're new to the channel, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And guys, please, if you enjoyed the video tonight, make sure you give it a like. That'll help other people find the video, of course, here on YouTube. For those of you who are gonna be joining us over at the live lesson in just a minute, I'll see you in just a minute and uh, we'll continue making marks, but this time we'll be using some lines to mm -hmm. add that ink to the paper. All right, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and sign out for this evening. Good night, everybody.